what's up everyone so i'm going to show you how to complete the team affinity program i think the best way to do this is to start out with the showdown when you go into the program all right go to programs team affinity start out with the showdown it's going to give you uh 15,000 xp right off the bat you don't have to have any of the cards in the program and that's why i tell you to start with the showdown once you get the 15,000 xp you'll have uh, three packs, sorry, two packs with players, and one of them is a choice pack, and then you get a regular pack. I would do some moments in order to get the captain pack as well. Once you get some of these packs, you're going to want to create uh, a separate team. So in case you didn't know, you can have four squads, and you can interchange them. So right now I'm on my main squad. If I go over to, I just named it a rec squad. This is where I put players I want to use to play against the CPU in order to complete stat missions. All right. I'll go to the stat missions in the team affinity program so I can show you. There's three different categories of stat missions. There's a team build mission. So you got to get 2,500 XP with each of the teams in that division. So this is the NL West. You're going to do it with the Padres, Diamondbacks, Rockies, and Giants and Dodgers. And then there's the captain stat missions where there's a captain pack and you get to choose each time you get one. You'll get five of them as you go along in the team affinity program. So at each time you get one, just put one on your on your rec squad, as I like to call it, and then play with that rec squad in the conquest for the team affinity. This way you're killing two birds with one stone and really you're trying to kill three birds with one stone and uh, do the team stat missions on this as well. I usually like to start with the pitchers because pitchers gain XP a lot faster than position players. So I'll start with Zach Gallon, Daniel Bard, and Clayton Kershaw when I pick my cards. And I'll save Machado and Brandon Crawford for the last two picks when I get those packs. Okay? Now, I've already done this West Showdown and Conquest, so I'll just show you what I do when I get those packs. I'm going to back out. Go to Collect. My Packs. You get one for each league. So I got the NL and AL. All right, I'm going to go with Gallon. And then I'll add them to my rotation. Okay. And you can do this with a lot of other programs. The, A the April Tops Now program, uh, you can use those on your squad because there are missions with those players that will help you gain XP as you use those players. Keep in mind, you can use these players in any game mode, whether it's online or offline. I would recommend playing against the CPU and playing against uh, the computer on Conquest, Mini Seasons, and any other uh, versus CPU game mode. Okay, I'm gonna take Shohei here. I'll put him on the squad, he's a pitcher. All right, I'll put him in over Strider because he's not really getting me any stats for anything regarding these programs. Now, although I already played the Conquest for the West, you can get some of these cards early on by doing the moments and showdown like I mentioned. Even doing some of the team builds with your main squad and having these teams, uh, players from these teams. Okay, and then you just add them to your team and then while you're adding them to your team, keep playing Conquest. All right, I already restarted this one. So the way to attack Conquest is pretty simple. Go after the Strongholds first. The Strongholds are just the team with the logos on it. Okay, and then when you get this stronghold, I usually like to make a circle around the stronghold and then just beam right over to the next stronghold. So if I'm going for Colorado, all right, I can move. I can sim against that. The computer's going to attack me. Uh, it didn't beat me because I had more fans than him by a lot by the computer. And then you're going to have to play each stronghold game. So you're going to play 10 games because there's five in each division. And then you'll have to choose your difficulty based on how many fans you have by difference. If you've done this before, you know, you can fast forward through this. Basically, I like to put the henchman and the captain from the packs you get in the affinity program, put them on my team, use them while I play all these games so I get those stats and XP. And then, like I said, you're, you're killing multiple birds with one stone. Once you do that, get all the strongholds done, and then you can simulate the rest of these games. It's kind of a, a burden to go through and do it, but it's really easy once you finish all the strongholds. Um, it'll be worth it if you put the time in. So that's pretty much it for the strategy on, on Conquest and Team Affinity. Now, there's not much else you can do for Team Affinity, like I said, other than the moments and then the missions. Uh, but definitely try the, the showdown first. Get through the Conquest. You can do exchanges. It's really early in the game. 
to do exchanges. Uh, I definitely utilize exchange later in the year. Keep in mind, this is a good way to get XP for any program because you'll have exchanges in other programs as well. Basically, you just exchange any player in your inventory that you don't have collected already. So if you collected any of these cards in your live series and you don't have any extra or duplicate cards, then they won't be available in this little catalog here. So, for example, I have already collected you Darvish on the Padres. I don't have any duplicates of him, so he's not available. If I do get a duplicate, I can either sell it, quick sell it for stubs, or I can keep it and think about using it in an exchange like this and think about saving it for the future for another exchange. This um, Walker Bueller card, I'm not going to use it, but do I really want to exchange it here? I think I can complete the program without exchanging and getting the XP from the exchange. I'm going to see if I can do that first. I usually save the exchange feature for last. That way I can use these duplicates that I know I'm not going to use for any collections and I'm not going to use in my squad to sell it for stubs. If you're no money spent like me and like a lot of people are on this game because you already paid 60 or $70 for the game or 100 in some people's case, then you're not going to buy stubs a lot. So I try to find ways to get stubs by selling cards that I don't need for collection, that I don't want to use for exchange, and that I'm definitely not going to use in my, in my squads. So once I finish any mission that I need to with Walker Bueller, um, I'll just get, I'll get rid of them, sell them for stubs. Or like I said, later in the game, I'll exchange them. That's pretty much it for team affinity check out my other videos to see how i attack uh getting other cards getting rewards of course there's a lot of good cards from buying the packs if you don't have the stubs you just got to look out for flash sales and look at ways to sell your inventory for stubs okay but the best way for getting rewards i'll say this for collections in previous years the best rewards usually came from battle royale and from rank seasons. Rank, rank seasons is a little bit easier this year. So I see a lot more players with the rank seasons rewards. And if I go into online modes, you'll have events, battle royale, and rank seasons. These are the three best options for getting the best cards in the game. You'll need those cards to complete certain collections later in the year that come out. If they do player collections like they've done every year before this, then you'll need those cards from the, the battle royale events and the rank seasons set one's a little different you get set one cards from every which way in the game you get it from conquest you get it from tops now um and in case you didn't know that do the tops now program because there's a lot of set one cards so if you really want to get jazz chisholm and you really want to get trey turner and then eventually reach the first set collection pack you're gonna have to do the tops now program to get a lot of those cards so if you go into other programs go into april tops now just play all the moments you gotta you just gotta grind all these moments out some of them are kind of frustrating but most of them are pretty easy they're just hitting hitting you know hits extra base hits home runs there's only a few pitching ones that take a little bit of time i haven't done week four yet but you see how far along i got look at all these cards you get towards week one sorry set one just for doing a moment at a time okay and then there's missions you can do for this as well Use the players that you get along this XP path in your squad so you can create a, even another squad after that and use it just for top snail cards. And then you could put them on your squad, get XP with those players, and that'll move you along the program faster. There's some pretty good cards here at the end of this as well, some good pitchers. Usually you see better top snail as the year move along, uh, moves along, you'll see better top snail cards. But for now, it only goes up to 95 overall. So that's kind of how you attack any program, really. You, you do, the, do some quick things to get some cards first to build your team up, like the moments. And then if there's a showdown, do that. If there's a conquest, start it. And then do the moments to get those players on your squad, on your you know duplicated squad, but not your main squad. If you want them on your main squad, that's fine, too, if they're good enough. All right, and then as you're doing the conquest and the other uh, game modes, even mini season to get other rewards, uh, battle royale events, you can put some of these players on your event squads because why not? It's not going to affect your rank season record. So as you get these players, you'll get more XP for playing online with them. Put them on your event squad if you can. And then that way you'll get more XP 
move along faster and complete all the programs faster. As you complete the programs, uh, you'll f- you just feel more accomplished. Um, it's kind of different this year. Previous years, you kind of had to keep up with all the programs to stay competitive. But now it seems like you can just kind of go for the cards you want. You can really focus on certain cards, attack them, get them, and build a whole squad out of cards that you really want without having to complete every single program. Uh, if you want Griffey, you have to do the Battle Royale and get to the Battle Royale rewards, or you got to go 12-0, and 0, all right? If you want the events cards, then you got to play events. It's, it's the same with that, but it seems like you can still build a really good squad early on in the game by kind of allocating your time across all the programs. But if you, like I said, if you want a specific card, you do need to have a strategy. Right now, I, st- I really want to get Trey Turner, and I really want to get at least one set pack from set one. So I'm trying to get 140 set one cards. I'm not really selling a whole lot of them. Might sell some of them that I don't want because there's so many opportunities to get set one cards. I know that I could still get that collection done, or at least not done, but to the point where I want the cards that I have, or get the cards that I I want. And that's that's pretty much it. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.